Introducing the Vortex Theory by Russell Moon. The mathematics of the Vortex Theory thesis proves precisely and exactly how matter shrinks and the phenomenon of time slows down. It gives an exact mathematical explanation for the length shrinkage and time dilation effects associated with the famous michelson morley experiment. A mathematical proven theory with the first ever published experiment that changed the speed of light. Yes, an experiment that changed the speed of light. Using the principles of the vortex theory, it was theorized that when a photon encounters a region of denser space its velocity increases, traveling faster, between the region of denser space. It is tentatively titled the photon acceleration effect. To prove this revolutionary idea, an experiment was devised using a laser interferometer and two electromagnets. Photons of light or energy are condensed regions of space. When a photon encounters an electromagnetic field, both the velocity and the frequency of the photon will change. In the experiment the electromagnets created a region of tensor space. So, when the photon passed through this region of denser space it speeded up the photon creating the interference patterns, shown here. This is by far the greatest experiment ever conducted in modern physics. It shows the speed of light is not a constant as predicted by Albert Einstein. The speed of light can be changed, and was changed, by this revolutionary experiment. What does this mean? The era of Einstein is over. And a new era has begun. Vortices were created between the master and slave chips in the experiment between France and the United States. Energy is not transferred through the air using electromagnetic waves. During the National Conference on Nuclear Physics in St. Petersburg, Russia, this revolutionary experiment was conducted at the St. Petersburg State University. The organizing committee vice chairman was Professor Konstantin Grudnev. Currently he is head of the Nuclear Physics Department of St. Petersburg State University. The published paper on the experiment that changed the speed of light was later titled the St. Petersburg State University that discovered the photon acceleration effect. The organizing committee chairman was Professor Yuri Agonason. Frontiers in the physics of nucleus took place on June 28 to July 1, 2005. Professor Yuri Agonisna is responsible for heading the team that discovered the man-made elements we now find in the periodic table of elements. In 2006 working at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubnia, Moscow the latest element 180 was announced. It was named on Unoctum 294. Before we explain this new era in science, we need to view man's vision of the universe. Our knowledge of all the physical sciences is based upon matter, space, time, energy, and the forces of nature. The fundamental principles of physical science, that are the foundations of engineering, physics, chemistry, thermodynamics, and astronomy and everything else we encounter in the entire physical universe are fundamental unknowns. The first and most important of these fundamental unknowns is mass. Mass is the single most important scientific characteristic of matter. It is the one characteristic of matter that is used in all of the formulas of physics and engineering to explain the motions of matter. And yet, it is a complete mystery. It is a mystery because although science knows what mass does, it does not know what mass is. Here we have a picture of a hydrogen atom with a proton and electron but no scientist in the world can point to its mass. Hundreds of years ago, Sir Isaac Newton discovered the famous mathematical relationship that describes the attraction of one mass for another mass. He called it the law of gravity. And even though he used the principle of mass to discover this great law of physics, not even this greatest of all scientists could explain what mass was. 
the law of gravity only explains what mass does. It cannot explain what mass is. I have explained phenomena by the force of gravity, but I have not yet ascertained the cause of gravity itself, and I do not invent hypotheses. Sir Isaac Newton, 1643 to 1727. Albert Einstein discovered the relationship between mass and energy and used it in his famous equation. But not even the great Albert Einstein knew what mass was. In the beginning of the 1900s, two of the most important theories in modern physics have no connection at all. They simply don't match. Relativity which is used to describe the macro, heavenly bodies in our universe. And quantum mechanics which is used to describe the micro, the atoms which are viewed as particles. Einstein explained that gravity is just geometry. Mass warps space, and so objects tend to slide down the geometrical warps that other objects create moving closer together. When we look at this, it looks like gravitational attraction. Unfortunately, the theory of quantum mechanics has a total different explanation for gravity. It proposes, gravity is an effect generated by a tiny particle called E, graviton. But the graviton has never been seen. Einstein used time to explain how space was constructed. This explanation of space then defines how matter is constructed. Or the explanation of matter is then used to explain how energy and the forces of nature are constructed. But time does not exist. Just as Einstein's theory of relativity is based upon the proposal that time exists as a fourth dimension called space-time and is therefore a fundamental principle of the universe. The vortex theory is based upon the proposal that time is not a fundamental principle of the universe. Instead, time exists only as function of motion, a phenomenon created by motion. This reduces the five pieces of the universe, matter, space, time, energy, and the forces of nature, to four. Matter, space, energy, and the forces of nature. All of the other theories explaining the universe's construction depend upon the existence of time. If time does not exist, every one of them becomes instantly obsolete. But, does time really exist? The concept of time plays a major part in both the explanation of how the universe works and how the universe is constructed. Time is used in almost every important physics equation in science. To discover the truth about time, consider the following philosophical question. If all of the motions of everything in the universe stopped, and then, started again, is there any way to tell for how long they were stopped for? The answer is no.